No matter how intellectual, evolved, or cultured the human species has become, at its core, the Homo sapien is primal in nature. But what happens when technology is advancing faster than the evolutionary adaptations can keep up? Can technological advancements be the human species meteor in ice age that once wiped out the dinosaurs? Could we be holding the brink of our own extinction in the palms of our hands? We'll be exploring that and much more here on MANA as we are exploring the negative effects of social media from a psychiatrist. We live in a culture of instant gratification. Uber, Lyft, Netflix, Amazon Prime, all instilling in us instant gratification. But what are the unintentional consequences of access, exposure, and excess? We live in a state of constant gluttony, indulgence, and pleasure. Fast food, binge watching, and vanity metrics. Social media and entertainment operates providing escapism, but we are ignoring incongruence, which is when the wants of our life don't match the values, morals, and our own personal desires. Like wanting to do something worthwhile and important with your life, but working at a nine to five job, or desiring integrity, but lying. That is incongruence. But instead of addressing the incongruence by getting a new job or a new skill set or position or telling the truth, we scroll, numb, and ignore. It should be noted that we are completely incapable of compartmentalizing self-control when we are in a constant state of self-indulgence and we have not exercised that portion of the mind. Because when you put your phone down, the adrenal gland receives a message from the brain to make cortisol, which is a hormone responsible for our fight or flight response. The average phone user checks their phone every 15 minutes or less with no notification, simply because the brain says so. And this is even the reason behind the phenomenon of the phantom vibration or notification when you didn't receive a message or a notification, or even worse, when your phone isn't even on you. But it should be noted that these apps on our phone are purposefully addictive. However, how does addiction work? Remember last episode, we talked about the subconscious where strong emotion reaches the psyche best. Again, not bad or good emotion, just strong. And we find the region for strong emotion is at the bottom of the brainstem with more primal emotions such as fear, anxiety, loneliness, the lower you go on the brainstem. And remember, the brain is a connection center for learned behavior and habit loops. It has stimulant response, trigger reaction, emotion output. We're not made for a constant stimulation or pleasure, but it actually lessens the pleasure receptors needing higher amounts of stimulation and pleasure. This is the same track of thought and behavior that addiction operates on. So what is a habit loop? Well, boredom. Have you ever been bored? So you got on your phone, but you didn't like what you saw on your feed. So you got off only to moments later find yourself back on your phone again. Why? Because boredom is a strong emotion and that is a habit loop. Remember the hippocampus is the part of the brain used for learning and memory and mood and emotion. 
Your apps and phone purposely operates like a slot machine, manipulating mood and emotion through habit loops and learned behavior. Same functionality and motions, same colors, and even same sound inputs. This is called gamification. So you'll see on your apps there is a pull to refresh feature to simulate the illusion of control, just like a slot machine. The eye is stimulated by bright colors and warm colors, and this is why your notifications are red, but also the ding noise is accompanied by it that it stimulates curiosity through two sensory stimulants. And the infinite scroll provides a frictionless experience keeping addiction. We see with Pagnation, individuals use less control, not having visual cues, and a lesser effect with internal cues providing personal satisfaction. We call this social snacking. For only the frontal cortex, which is in control of rational thought, is the portion of the brain that recognizes social media as communication and social interaction. So like, of course, I've been talking all day and scrolling. I, I've been social, but I haven't been in physical proximity with another human being in hours. However, the rest of the brain, not being the frontal cortex, does not see social media as interpersonal relationships. So the findings are you cannot have digital interactions as a supplement for interpersonal interactions. This would be the same thought process of eating chips, junk food, snacks, and energy drinks and supplements instead of eating real food for nourishment. We are not providing ourselves with social nourishment through social media. And we see a rise of loneliness and anxiety, not because of social media, but by replacing human interactions with social media. Because the frontal cortex controlling reason reasons that you have been social while the rest of your brain says that you haven't. But why is this killing your relationship with God? It is the cost of discipleship. And the Christian model centers around delayed gratification, sacrifice, and service, which is in direct conflict of pleasure, indulgence, gluttony, and social media. And we see this in the verses, Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will receive a harvest and reap if we do not give up. That is not self-gratification, pleasure, or instant gratification and indulgence. Matthew 16, 24, that Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. We don't deny ourselves ever. And even evangelism is hindered because of the lack of learned social skills used to communicate and underdevelop emotional awareness. For we do not have enough interpersonal relationships to know how to talk to strangers or simply hold a conversation that is face to face and not screen to screen. Rebuke, correction, conflict completely obliterated by a touchscreen. Even our own eternity is shaped through the framework that our life right now is not our reward, but our inheritance is in the life to come in heaven. Delayed gratification. So of course you don't fast because you live in a constant state of gluttony and overindulgence. And it's no surprise that only 20% of professing Christians read their Bible regularly because reading is a slow tier of stimulation compared to entertainment media and slot machine apps. Even the patience needed to be taught and instructed by the Holy Spirit is gone and decimated by a shortened attention span. So what can we do? So what's the solution? So what can be done? Thanks to the neuroplasticity and the brain's ability to reroute neural pathways, none of the damage we have done to our attention nor our pleasure sensors in the mind are permanent. It was found that the brain will come to a regular level of stimulation 
after coming down from our constant stimulation of light in social media after eight days. And isn't it a coincidence? The number seven is the number of completion, but the number eight is the number of new beginnings. So if you go cold turkey and bypass the withdrawals, you'll be able to live without social media and it is found that it takes 30 days to break a habit and develop a new one. So if you'd like to read more about the information provided in this video on the brain and social media, you can read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and Digital Minimalism. And one more, The Shallows. Thank you for watching. Feel free to use the material in this video as an aid to Bible study for edification and building up the faith of other believers. But in terms of evangelism, remember the mind is the longest way to the heart. Instead, witness by the way of the heart, by the word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, or by the way of the soul through the spiritual gift of prophecy. And as we pray out, remember God is holy and Jesus has come to save us from our sins and from ourselves if we repent and believe. For he will be back soon to judge us and grant us either eternal life or eternal damnation. So Lord, please baptize us with your Holy Spirit that we may be born again. If this video has been helpful or informative to you, make sure to um, support the channel by sharing, liking, subscribing, and reviewing on our podcast on The Blessing Report and our new show, Mana. And you can also support monetarily by joining our Patreon or donating on our YouTube membership. So make sure to check out other videos in our playlist. And this has been The Blessing Report and our new show, Mana, a look into Christian apologetics as we're exploring faith and the validity of the Bible through science, history, mathematics, and all things reason. Imagine if Jesus was narrating the Discovery Channel. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.